Hi everyone, my name is Kayla and welcome back to Kay's Hidden Shelf where we talk about books. Today I'm going to share with you the books that I hope to read in February. January just blew right by, I don't know where it went, and it was much busier than I anticipated. I am currently working on my December wrap-up along with the January wrap-up that will follow with it. I'm hoping to get those out soon, so I appreciate your patience with that. And let's just go ahead and jump into these books. Now some of these are carryovers, so I will start with those first. Let's start off with the first one being Sordanian by L. L. Stevens. This is a fantasy book. I've talked about it already on the channel as I started it some time ago. However, I'm taking it slow and there's a reason for it. Now, there is a lot going on. This is a slow burn, political intrigue, fantasy story with the making of a villain. It's been fantastic so far and it's been the kind of book that I want to savor. So I'm reading it at a slower pace so that I can enjoy it more. I'm about 170 pages in and the chapters so far are short and to the point. There's a lot that happens in each chapter chapter despite the page count for each one being quite short but it just adds to wanting to savor this more and more. There's a lot of details to keep track of. It's a very intricate story with a lot of character-driven focus, so this is just one that I'm really enjoying and I'm looking forward to continuing in February. The next one is actually my last read for the Keymark Readathon, which ends on February 6th. I started it last night and so far I'm really enjoying it. It is The Soul's Aspect by Mark Halloway, which is book one in the Aspect series. Now, this is a fantasy series, and it follows a healer turned killer. Let's go ahead and read the back of this one. A healer forced to become a killer for an empire that would grind his country to dust. Kellum, the sickly son of a widowed physician, has devoted his life to learning his father's craft. Wanting to finally step out of his father's shadow, he embarks on a project of his own, seeking out the help of Themia the town's newly arrived alchemist and a rare wielder of magic. But Themia has secrets of her own, secrets carried from the heart of the Empire itself, secrets that would steal Kellum away from his home and into the Empire's academy for magic users. The Azale Academy beckons, but can Kellum survive the academy and its brutal regime? And if so, what would he have to become? So far, I'm really enjoying this. I love the aspect of having a physician or a healer in a magical setting, and there's just so much that can be done with that. I really enjoy reading them myself, so I'm looking forward to seeing what happens with Kellum and maybe getting a darker take on the Chosen One or Coming of Age story. Moving into the next two books, because I'm going to put those ones together, and that is Dead House Gates and Memories of Ice by Stephen Aaron. Erickson. January was a pretty crazy month and I am a bit behind and by a bit I mean quite a lot. I'm only about 50 pages into Dead House Gates but I am going to catch up in February. I believe our live show for the Malazan read-along that we're doing will be held sometime mid-February with a final date still to be determined, but we'll get that to you soon. So I do have some time to catch up and hopefully bump right into Memories of Ice right after Dead House Gates. I will say that I was quite intimidated when I started reading this. I knew it was a chunky book, but when I opened the pages, the font is quite small. I wasn't expecting that, so it was a little bit more intimidating than I anticipated. I am using the audiobooks as well for both of these. I love immersion reading, I love the experience I get from it, I feel like I retain more with it, and for this kind of read, I feel like retention is what I need most. So I'm definitely going to be doing a combo for audiobook and physical for both of these, and I'm just looking forward to seeing where all the love comes from, especially for Dead House Gates. I also have a buddy read planned because what would a TBR or MBR be without a buddy read? And that is Butcher Baker Candlestick Taker by Patricia Meredith. This is book one in the Spokane Clock Tower Mysteries, which is a historical fiction mystery thriller mix. I'll actually be reading this with Andrew from Andrew's Wizardly Reads, and I'm really excited to buddy read this trilogy. I feel like it's going to be a lot of fun to problem solve and try and piece together the mystery that takes place in this. This is set in 1901 and follows the character Archie Prescott. He's well known for making clock chimes, I believe, and ends up catching the eye of a beautiful woman who later turns up dead. 
Unfortunately, he is connected to the crime and he needs to work together with a detective and the detective's brother in order to prove his innocence. This also says that there are six intersecting storylines creating a cohesive look at a convoluted murder that will require all points of views to discover the truth. I love that it is going to be a bit more complex than just one plotline or one storyline to try and figure out the who done it. So I'm definitely looking forward to reading this, reading it with a friend and with a historical fiction mystery thriller, it'll be a nice palate cleanser between all of the fantasy books. And before I forget to mention, I did receive this copy in exchange for an honest review from Patricia, so thank you for sending that. Next, I have another buddy read planned, and this is going to be with Evie from She Was Only Evie, Tori from Tori talks and Patricia Meredith. They all run fantastic channels, same as Andrew. I'll leave links where you can find all their channels down below. But for this one, we are going to be reading The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. Back in December, we ended up buddy reading Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. The live show discussion was called The Classics Cage Match, and we are continuing along with this. So this month, we are reading Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and we're going to have a live show discussion with all of us together about our reading experience with this. Like I said at the beginning of the year, I wanted to mix more classics back into my reading and historical fiction, so this is going to be a fantastic breakup between all of the fantasy and sci-fi. The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is something I've seen adaptations for countless times or variations of, and I've always found the character to be quite interesting, but I'm really eager to see the original story that brought all of those different versions to life. For those who may be unfamiliar with the story, this follows Dr. Jekyll. As he is in his laboratory, he takes an elixir that changes him from a mild-tempered man to a despicable, cruel Mr. Hyde. This seems harmless at first, but quickly descends into chaos. Dr. Jekyll realizes that there's only one way to stop Mr. Hyde, and this novella explores that story. This one should be a lot of fun, and I'm curious to see if this is actually going to turn into a cage match for the live discussion. <laughs> Moving into the final book for February, being Zeroed Out, by Jacob Markov. Now this is a cyberpunk thriller and I did receive this copy in exchange for an honest review from the author. Now this is one that I had originally planned to read last month or the month before that. I do apologize that it's taken me a little bit longer than I anticipated, but it sounds really intriguing. This is set in a fully automated metropolis governed by an all-seeing synthetic intelligence that examines the morality of limiting technological evolution. Those concepts really intrigue me. The evolution of technology in our own world has been incredible to look back on and to try and guess what will happen next as technology moves so quickly. Now, seeing this set in a sci-fi, a thriller, is going to be intriguing to see how the author pulls all of these details into a cyberpunk world. Let's go ahead and read the back. While chasing a criminal through an unruly sector of Omega City 6, freelance enforcer Zed Takata stumbles on the first of many victims by an unknown serial killer that has somehow escaped all forms of the city's intensive surveillance. His investigations into the murders will uncover some hard truths he had not intended to find. On the other side of the city, Ash Starbrook lives as a dreamcaster, or someone whose dreams are turned into highly profitable virtual reality entertainment. She is unaware that the symbols showing up in her nightmares will have her caught up in Zed's murder investigation. Their intertwining stories will have them traveling through multiple layers of the neon-drenched, futuristic city filled with street gangs, radical political groups, and social elites. Something else I noticed about this is that it actually starts at chapter 25 and counts down to chapter 1. That definitely intrigues me along with the potential for the world and the murder mystery going on. So that is everything I hope to read in February. What are your reading plans for the month? Are there any that you're really excited for? Leave your comments down below. I always love hearing from you. As always, thank you for watching and take care of yourselves.